speaker actually for today. Hinahanap ko lang po yung kanyang uh, autobiography or CV. Um, Lian, um, we are honored to have the talk on occupational medicine po today by the Philippine uh, College of Occupational Medicine, former national chairman. She's a uh, fellow of occupational medicine, a dollar accredited OSHA practitioner or Ang OSHA po, pa-explain ko kay Jean, dahil hindi ko rin alam, okay? A professor at the New Era University College of Medicine. She's a Master's of Science recently received. And she's uh, a rural health physician of Masantol, Pampanga. And uh, a really wonderful person with a lot to share. Leyan, let's call in together. Um, Dr. Jean Tiangha Gonzalez. Dr. Jean, Welcome, join us. Hi, morning. So I'll um, I'll be discussing occupational uh, medicine. It's a specialty under the Philippine Medical Association, and it's under the umbrella of family med. Although we are a se separate specialty, um, kung merong corporate lawyers, merong corporate doctors. Putting it simply, okay. Uh, are you ready? Ayaw pumasok kasi. So, thank you for giving me a chance no, to, to orient you and to walk you through the specialty of occupational medicine. Actually, kami yung, uh, kami yung uh, more of um, looking into the workers' welfare. Kami yung mga doktor na ganon. So, you'll see us uh, in different fields. Yun si uh, sa mga mining, sa mga, sabi nga, sa mga uh, resorts, sa mga, uh, sa hospitals din kami, no? Uh, nasa manufacturing, BPOs, you'll see us uh, everywhere, no? Okay. Sorry, nagkakaroon lang ng, ano eh, ayaw pumasok. Yung slides ko. Yan. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So are we are, are we okay? Okay. So am I okay? Can you see the slides? Dr. Genius, we are working as well. Okay, good. Okay, so I'll start, no? So we'll, we'll be fast lang, ha? Huh? So I'll just run you uh, through occupational medicine. So remember, we are working not like, just not because we want to, to just busy ourselves, no? We're working for a good life. We work for our families, we work for our loved ones. But you know, work has other faces. No, ang hirap ng trabaho. You don't know what's going to happen to you. Work can sometimes hurt you. Work can make you sick. Work can even cause your life. No, it can be life or death. But who's gonna take care of you? Like us doctors, we take care of people. We take care of our patients. But who's gonna take care of us? No. So we are the doctors who will be preventing accidents and diseases caused by work. Kami yon, no, occupational physicians. If you will see, merong hard hat, no, kasi nandun kami lagi sa front lines ng trabaho. Okay. So occupational medicine is basically a multidisciplinary medical specialty. Bakit multidisciplinary? Kasi meron kaming engineering, meron kaming uh, um, accounting, Meron kaming psychology, meron kaming clinical, of course. So kami yung, yung, kami yung specialty na you, you will encounter terms like shackles. Alam mo ba yung mga shackles, yung mga uh, scaffoldings, mga outriggers, di ba? TLVs, SDS, yung mga safety data sheet. These things, no? utilization medicine, ergonomics, maraming mga terms na it is because marami kaming disciplines na fina-follow at we, we treat it holistically. No? We look at all aspects of work and then we 
plan whatever we're going to do to make work easier and to have no accidents and illnesses. So it involves balance between management and the labor sector. Meaning, pag sa clinical kasi, ang tinitingnan lang natin is the patient, right? Pero sa amin, we also look at management. When we plan no, programs, we look at the productivity side, we look at the cost-benefit side of management. Kasi pag nalugi si management, wala na rin labor, di ba? Magsasara ang kumpanya. We are primarily preventive, meaning we, we act, we plan before the accident happens. We prevent diseases. We make interventions so that no worker should should uh, suffer from accidents or no worker should be sick because he worked. Okay. We adhere to set standards. What does this mean? Ibig sabihin nito, we follow references. No? Meron kaming, like for example, lighting. We measure light. We, we, we know when you're going to go blind no? because you're working with too much light or okay, with too much sound. We know that this is the permissible value for for uh, sound, no? Kailangan hindi noisy, mga 80 to 85 lang. Usually 80 in, in 8 hours. So if you exceed that, you can go deaf, no? Okay. So we, we deal with set of standards. And also, we deal with compliance with regulatory agencies. Ibig sabihin, we have, we have to submit reports, we have annual physical exams. We have um, uh, annual medical reports that we submit to the Department of Labor and Employment. We also submit to the ENR. We also submit to, we help no, with, the, with the ENR compliance and with the Department of Health. Okay. We use with the HIRAP. What does it mean? Hazards, identification, risk assessment, and control. Kailangan lahat ng actions namin, mas maganda if it is scientifically uh, studied, no? May basis ka kung bakit. And we usually, what are the hazards? The hazards are like the sources lang naman of danger or illness, no? And the risk is the probability that it can cause you harm. Pag tinignan namin yan, we look at the hazards and then we assess, we risk assess, and then we plan, we control, how to control these things. When we control, we usually have, um, it's the administrative control. You may make policies, like shift work ka, babawasan mo yung oras ng tao, na na-expose siya kasi masyadong mataas ang, ang radiation, di ba? Yung ganon. So, it's either we, we do administrative, engineering, nakikita ninyo ngayon, yung may maraming barriers, yung may mga plastic, yung mga, yung mga tindahan, yung mga cashiers, di ba? Those are engineering controls na very simple, pero you can prevent the infection of COVID through those things, no? And then we have uh, the PPEs. Kami yung specialty na uh, parang conversational lang na ginagamit namin na term na PPE. Like, we, hindi lang naman face shield and face mask. No? The PPEs are usually there to protect you. These are equipment that will protect you, like your uh, ear plugs, ear muffs, no? so that hindi ka mabibingi, harness. No? These things are all PPEs. Occupational medicine involves networking and collaboration with multi-stakeholders. Pag nandun ka sa kumpanya, ang doktor usually nakikipag-usap din sa LGU. No? For example, ngayong COVID, there's a very strong link na kailangan pag mayroon tayong exposed employee, dapat alam ni LGU. Or if there's fire, you have to collaborate with the Bureau of Fire no? Protection para magkakaroon tayo ng mga fire drills, sila mag-oversee with red cross no we have several multi uh, we have several stakeholders that we are at partners with next uh, uh, occupational medicine focuses not only focuses on the workplace kasi pati yung environment tinitingnan namin for example you are uh, working in a manufacturing co a company titingnan mo kung saan pumupunta ang waste products ng company mo kung pumupunta yan sa canal at sa rivers abay mali ang occupational medicine, tinitingnan din niya ang environment. And tinitingnan niya yung health, no? the risk of, of, of these, the, the processes, the, the systems, 
and the chemicals inside the, the plant, the manufacturing plant, you look into that at titingnan ninyo how it affects the community. No? Baka naman meron tayong mga chemicals na nagsisip through at nagkakos ng cancer sa ating mga community. And of course, it involves medical surveillance and epidemiology. So we look at statistics pa din. We follow through sa ating mga pasyente. Especially, example, we have a battery manufacturing company. Sa battery manufacturing, mataas ang lead no, utilization nila. What we do, we usually test their, test their blood lead. We monitor them so that they will not have any kidney failure o walang magkakaroon ng mga end-stage effects uh, yung exposure nila sa uh, toxin. Okay. And lastly, it promotes wellness. It's not being lang, uh, this not, occupational medicine doesn't mean walang uh, aksidente lang or wala lang siyang health, but kailangan masaya din and well-balanced ang uh, employee. So this one, I just, uh, I'll just flash this siguro. No? These are the roles of the occupational health physician according to the standards. Sabi ko nga kanina, ang OM talaga may standards. Ang OSH pala, Dr. Ana, is occupational safety and health. No? So I am an accredited occupational safety and health practitioner ng Department of Labor and Employment. So we look at the programs, no? we supervise, no? tingnan namin yung mga diseases, we conserve the health of the workers, no? we restore them, mag-training, and then we analyze the records, and we are an advisor to management and labor. For example, ngayong COVID, hindi naman alam ng mga managers, ano ba yan, doktora, ano bang pwedeng gawin natin para hindi makapasok sa atin ang COVID at ma-lockdown tayo. So that occupational doctor will study, ano kayang magandang intervention, di ba? No. During the first uh, few years, a few months, uh, Di ba, nagmi-misting, misting pa before. So, may mga ibang companies, nag-set up sila ng misting, tapos may PPEs, and so forth. So, I'll just give you a... I'll share something lang, yung, yung life ko lang, yung journey ko lang, as an occupational medicine physician. Actually, I'm wearing so many hats, no? Nasa academe din ako, I teach also, and then I'm also into government. I'm also a policy maker, no? And of course, I'm an occupational medicine practitioner. So, eto yan, internship. I entered into government muna, no? After the internship. And then, I took my basic course in health and safety at the University of the Philippines, College of Public Health. Uh, huwag na tingnan yung year kasi siguradong medyo ano. Anyway, I started my, my career no, sa America Online. Uh, it, was, it was a call center before. No? Eh, hindi pa uso yung call centers and BPOs. Yan, yan na yun. And then I entered Cosmos. San Miguel, Corporation, pa, pa relieve, relieve. And then meron akong, usually I, I, I have schedules there, no? Mag Saturdays, you know? And then Pampangas best. Siguro alam naman yung to say no, no? Okay. And then I did not stop there kasi I was a basic courser. So what I did was I took my advanced course in occupational uh, safety and health and became a diplomate and fellow of the occupational med, Philippine College of Occupational Medicine. So after that, I was invited to join the board. So naging board member ako ng PICOM. And uh, I became a national secretary actually for, I'm not sure if it's six or eight years, no? Okay. But as of now, I'm, I'm still the vice president of Pampanga chapter. Okay. So nag-focus nag ako dito sa chapter. So anyway, I had more uh, company affiliations. I... I joined Canon Marketing before. Um, uh, Teletech East West BPO, um, Superl Philippines. Alam niyo Superl, yun yung gumagawa ng mga coach bags, Michael Kors, mga ano? Excuse. Okay. Uh, Azul Torre. This is a construction corporation where I, who, who was uh, in charge of uh, uh, constructing the 
um, coal manu- coal power plant in uh, Zambales. Oh, so I was a site physician there for a construction company. And of course, these uh, Teletech and East West, BP- these are all BPOs. And SPT. SPT is... Uh, it's uh they, they they make precision tools so maliliit sobrang liliit na mga tools that they use for mga weapons <laughs> mga ano mga computers mga ganun so may mga maliliit na maliliit na tools yan ginagawa yan dito and then i have my hospital affiliations medical city and of course our, la- uh, our lady of mount carmel here in pampanga okay so i continued learning pa din no as practitioner ako sa Dole, construction safety, training of trainers. Then I had my two master degrees no, in education and public management. And then I focused on my advocacies. So turo, turo, sharing, no, everything. Okay. Yan, yan. No? Okay. And then collaborations. Actually, the, uh, the this one sa right side, it's with Dr. Jimenez, and it I I, I had an, a, mo, a memorandum of agreement with the Association of Municipal Health Officers of the Philippines, Pampanga Chapter, para mag-join ng LGU at saka ang OCMED. And of course, tingnan ninyo, ito yung first year ng ating Young Doctors no, Conference. And, and uh, NOSH, no? which is the National Occupational Safety and Health uh, Congress. Okay, so that ends my presentation. Uh, please be safe and healthy. Thank you. Okay. okay Hi, Dr. Like, yes. Thank you for the- an insightful lecture. Ayan. Yeah. <laughs> Tapos, uh, pakilala ko yung mga co-moderators natin. Okay. Um, that's, um, I'll call in Dr. Leanne Salazar again. Dr. Leanne, how are you? Hello po. Good morning again. Hi. And um, Leanne, um, uh, ako na lang magpapakilala kay Dr. Fatima. Okay. We are doing the, katatapos lang ng kanya exam and I hope that she took the time to answer. Baka naman nagmadali ito at masisi pa ako sa kanyang ano, exam results. Um, she is a uh, fourth year at the University of the East. She is a, um, tama ba ako, a, re- a registered a chemist. Chemist. Yes, registered ma'am. chemist. She's a fourth-year student at the University of the East Medical School. She is also the present president of the Association of Philippine Medical Colleges Student Network. And she'll join us today to help us with the Q&A. She's um, Dr. Fatima, future doctor. Pero linagay ko na lang doctor kasi para maganda. Future doctor, Fatima. Pam Barateta. Pam, kumusta ka? Join us. Hi, Doc. Uh, good morning po. Good morning po, everyone. Pam, Dr. Jean. Hello po. Okay naman, Doc. Hindi po ako nag-rush. I answered every <laughs> item as much as I can. Yes, Doc. Kaya ang problema, kakausap po sa amin niya, ni Dr. Jean. Pediatrics po yun. Kaya okay naman po. Good. Let's have a group photo muna before the Q&A of Dr. Jean. Napakali ko yung salamin. Ayan. Okay, so uh, huh? Dr. Jean, uh, tatlo na kayong iiwanan ko. I will ask the first question po about uh, being an occupational medicine doctor. My first question is, Dr. Um, please advise yung mga uh, parang nat- ayaw na magkliniko, ayaw ng magrounds, how to uh, become an occupational medicine doctor. Okay? Okay. So, so, Actually, madali lang naman eh. Uh, requirement lang naman talaga is for you to have your basic course. It's being given by the Department of Labor of Employment. But for doctors, um, meron, uh, meron ARM, which is the Philippine College of Occupational Medicine. Kami yun, na nagbibigay ng, ng course no? for, for doctors. And then after that, you can have your diplomate course, your advanced course. Sa ngayon kasi modular pa rin siya, no? But there are um, nag-umpisa na yung residency training talaga na 
uh, it's it's somewhere in Laguna, but uh, we we're ano, we're uh, having baby steps, no, papunta doon. And after that, if you have your diplomate uh, uh, course, actually, ano yan eh, may mga modules yan on ergonomics, biostatistics, industrial hygiene, na maraming courses yan. And it's taken monthly. After you take that, uh, you you proceed uh, to the to present yourself exam na. After the exam, may OSCE, and then uh, you will be conferred as a diplomate. After your diplomate, you can become a fellow if you have several years more of experience. Usually, it's five years. Uh, you make programs. You, know, you submit all your documents to the Philippine College of Occupational Medicine, and they will assess whether you are ready and you are qualified to be a fellow. And then you... you uh, are going to be uh, interviewed in uh, on sa panel, no, ng specialty board, and if you're lucky, you will be conferred as fellow. Yan lang po. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Yes. Hello, ma'am. Thank you for Hi. that uh, uh -oh. answer. So now for our next question, po. Uh, what uh, is the most challenging situation you faced as an occupational doctor? Actually, hindi naman most, pero ang challenging talaga would be yung uh, rigorous, ano, yung bang site visits, like sa construction, kasi mainit, no? Mainit, but you have to go there. Like when I was uh, um, a site uh, physician sa, 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 bandun, sa power plant, I had to go up the mountain. No? Naka, oo, oh, kompleto yun. Naka safety shoes, naka boots, no? And then, um, you know, one thing about construction, iba-iba kasi ang soil. So doon sa Sambales napaka ano, parang clay ang soil. So it's so hard to to move, no? Actually parang quicksand bumababang ganun yung paa mo, no? But the the sa mental side naman, ang mahirap sa ano would be yung uh, yung balancing management kasi before I used to work uh, sa isang BPO na na foreign, no? Multinational. Ang gusto ng Americans kailangan optimum maganda yung ano magandang maganda yung management but i was under uh, a contract no an agency ng isang HMO so they were saying doktora pwede po ba tayong ano uh, bumaba ng utilization kasi magastos the americans example lang kunyari the case was dysmenorrhea no sakit ng puson tapos stay mo muna sa clinic for 30 minutes pag hindi natanggal ang dysmenorrhea, ang gusto ng Americas, dalhin mo sa ER. Pero ang HMO, nag-violent reaction kasi ang mahal ng cost ng ER, di ba? So, I was caught between, kaya sabi nung ano, oy, masyado na tayo mag sabi ng Americas, oh, you're not giving us proper care. So, hindi ko alam kung paano ako lulugar. So, that was very challenging for me. Okay. Next part. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Okay, ma'am. So, for the next question, um, why did you decide po to take up um, your uh, specialization now? So, despite all the other um, um, specializations or fields, bakit po yung occupational um, ang, na ang, na ang napili niyo po? Actually, by accident lang kasi din talaga. <clears throat> ano kasi, yung boyfriend ko, sabi niya, <laughs> Ganda yan. Tara na, punta tayo dyan. Sabi ko, ano namang gagawin natin sa UP? Di pagtsagaan natin. Sabi niya gano'n. So, sige, sumama ako. And then, na nagulat ako, maganda pala yung field. Kasi you can prevent accidents and you can prevent cancer sa isang worker. Di ba? You, you don't, ano eh, mas maganda kasi yung you don't treat the person because the person has cancer na, di ba? Mas maganda yung iiwasan mo eh. No? You don't, ano eh, you, you focus on the thing, uh, the, the, the danger before it happens, before it uh, influences your, I mean, affects your, your worker. So, yun yung kinaganda kaya ako napunta dyan by accident and then by passion na eventually. 
Okay. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Ma so for our next question po, um, was flashed earlier. Yes. Please comment po on the Eddie Garcia case as an OM doctor. As an OM doctor, um, sana uh, um, naging mas prepared lang sila. Kasi I, I heard there was no medical team yata. Walang walang first aid team yata doon during the time. So, nung nadda pa siya, di ba, natisod, na no? Parang na, na ano siya sa wire. Yun, kasi trabaho ng occupational doctor din yun. Na tinitignan niya yung environment kung saan nag-work yung isang tao. Like, artista siya. Tingnan mo yung mga kable. Kami kasi, may pagkapraning kami, no? Ng mga, ng mga specialty. Before it happens, tinitignan mo, ay, baka mangyari ito, ay, baka ito, ito. Nako, pag nakaharang itong bagay na to, baka ano, matisod to or baka ma mabangga ito. So it could have been better kung na natingnan yung site at na-plan yung mga emergency, um, you know, mga things that could happen there. Okay, okay thank you, Doc. So we have a next question. So the question is, paano po ang mga companies doing rapid tests kahit hindi pa po advised? Actually, uh, the OH has already uh, emphasized na that is not supposed to be used for screening, no? So kami, sa Philippine College for Occupational Medicine, we worked with HPAC, that's uh, with Dr. Tony Dans, and it's an organization na multi-sectors, ano uh, no? Ang dami-daming mga nagko-contribute dyan at nagbibigay ng recommendations kay DOH. And now, DOH has... Uh, na uh, issued no may mga ini-issue na sila ng mga advisories may ini-issue rin na may binalabas na rin sila na handbook now it will be up to the the regulatory agencies no kung ikaw doktor ka sa loob ng kumpanya you have to advise management explain mo lang mabuti sir sayang po yung yung binagastos natin for rapid test hindi naman ho beneficial Mas maganda po ganito na lang gawin natin. Kasi usually sa management, they will look at cost, di ba? Ay, ang gastos niyan, doktora, wag yan. Diba? So, so that, siguro yun ang pinakamaganda. You talk to management, na wag na. No? Okay, okay ma'am. Thank you for the next question. Okay. When will be the next BCOM training po? Thank you. BCOM is basic course in occupational medicine. That's BCOM. No? The BCOM is being given by the Philippine College of Occupational Medicine. Yung uh, may BOSH na tinatawag, Basic Occupational Safety and Health Course, may na binibigay sa UP. So the BCOM, so, so, uh, ano, I think it's going to be any anytime soon. Kasi actually, ano yan eh? Uh, dati laging puno yan, no? kaya lang kasi face-to-face -face before. Now, um, the Occupational Safety and Health Center of the Department of Labor wants an online course kasi mas safer nga naman. That's why uh, siguro ano, anytime yan sa, sa next, ano, next few months, baka November or, ano, or December, magkaroon na ng online. Kasi nandun na eh, naisubmit na namin yung ano eh yung uh, modules. Okay. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. So, we have another question from Young Doctors PH. Doctora, you're working as a doctor sa municipal na, uh, municipality of Masantol. Ano po ang pinaka-challenging that you have faced during this COVID crisis pandemic? Okay. Ako maswerte ako because my mayor, my local chief executive, is uh, receptive at saka hands-on. Ang challenging yung attitude ng mga tao. Kasi uh, hindi mo kasi basta-basta ma, ma ano like what do you do pag hindi sila sum, so ano hindi sila sumunod. Diba? It's so difficult for ano I, although I do partner with the police, the PNP, para kung kunyari ayaw mag-isolate, pupuntahan ko talaga sa polis yan. Kasi merong contact tracing team din ang PNP. No? We work hand in hand. So, kinoconvince nila yan. This is very challenging. Yung mga ang pasaway ba? Everywhere naman yata may ganun eh. Di ba? Alam na nga nilang bali. Al alam na kang bawal lumabas. Lalabas pa din. No? 
Alam mo, bawal mag, maging magdikit-dikit, mag-inuman at magdikit-dikit. Ganun pa din. So, it's more of the attitude, I think. So, okay, ma'am. Thank you po. So, we have another question. Meron ka. I'm, I'm so happy because I see young doctors, eh. Sige. Sige po. Uh, uh, we have another question po from Dr. Kathleen Grace Maniago. Doctor, are job opportunities for occupational physicians affected ngayon pandemic? Thank you po. Yes, in a way, kasi merong mga nag-shutdown, nag no? maraming mga businesses na nag-close. Diba? Kaya medyo apektado din. Pero ngayon, pagod na pagod din ang occupational physicians. Kasi kami ang nasa frontline services pag workplace. No? Kami yung laging nandiyan tinatawag ng management, Doktora, kamusta? Meron may COVID daw na ano, may ganito daw tayo. Meron daw symptomatic. Doktora, we have to set up an isolation room for ano, kasi may compliance tayo. So, yan yung mga bagay na medyo nahirap ngayon. Uh, although, uh, the doctors no, sa companies na malaki, uh, merong online. No? May mga work from home kami. Kasi ano eh, pag kunyari talagang hindi kakayanin, hindi naman kami mag, magko-contact talaga. But we do use PPEs kung kailangan-kailangan. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. So um, for a last question, ma'am, last na po ito. So this is a question from Young Doctors PH. So, Doctora, any advice po for young um, medical doctors who are being paid minimally by big companies? Kasi madami daw po yung nagre regarding the pay. Ganito yan. It has always been a perennial problem. No? Usually, ang occupational doctors are being paid by the R. Ang ballpark figures is 450, 400 per R. No, ganyan. Pag mababa ka na dyan, mababang-mababa na yung bayad sa iyo, no? Although dapat, at least mga 1,000 man lang, di ba? So anyway, um, ang, ang magandang gawin dyan is, ang, ang question kasi, bakit, nababay, bakit binabayaran ng mura? Ang sagot kasi dyan, meron kasing tumatanggap. Meron kasing mga doctors that settle for like 250. Sige, okay na, they will accept. But if nobody will accept that, siguro wala naman tayong problema eh. Di ba? Malaking, malaking factor kasi yun eh. Meron kasing market na pumapayag ng ganyang fee. So unless na hindi mo yan ma-regulate, pag may tumatanggap, merong magbibigay at magbibigay pa rin ang mura. But we are trying to lobby no, with the Department of Labor na sana mas standardize ang fees. But then, it's being studied pa right now because um, number one, it's pandemic. Number two, the implications din siya as regards to the uh, regularity. May marami kasi mga occupational doctors na ayaw matali sa kumpanya. Like they will have their rounds after, di ba? Mga clinicians din. And may mga members kami na neurosurgeon, na mga pediatricians, may mga members kami ganyan, no? Very different hats. But the thing is, uh, pag ginawa mo kasing, ano yan, regular and, you know, ganun ang status, magpipilitan kang iwanan yung ibang mong practice. Kaya medyo ticklish pa yung issue na yan. Okay? So I think Thank that will be... Oo. Oh, oh. Oy, good now, luck, guys. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. So, ma'am, uh, may request lang po siguro one or two sentence inspirational words for our young doctors as we end I mean, this morning segment. Uh, okay. Actually, um, the occupational doctor is a doctor who will prevent your accident and your illness, especially at work. Or any person who enters the workplace. Kahit bumili ka lang sa loob ng isang mall, sagot ni occupational doctor niya. It is a noble profession. Maganda siya na specialty. But if you have other specialties in mind, pwede rin mag-coexist si occupational doctor. Like you can be an emergency medical doctor, no? emergency specialist, and an occupational doctor at the same time. No, maraming pwedeng pasukan eh. Na, it can be an internist, 
at the same time an occupational doctor. So whatever field you have, make the most out of it. Be the best that you can. And never stop learning. Kahit matanda ka na, you learn pa din. No? Do not stop learning kasi it will improve yourself and you will be able to help others. Yan lang po. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. So, um, I'll now call on back uh, Doc Anna York. Ma'am? Hi, Dr. Hi, ang ganda niyo yung usapan yung tatlo. And I was especially inspired by um, you're never too old. Ako tinamaan nun. So, baka makita mo ako doon sa occupational medicine na rin. <laughs> I'm never too old. O sa inyong yes. dalawa, ang advice ko sa inyong dalawa, you're never too young din naman to consider occupational. ba, Jean? Yes. Kasi parang hindi sa dati tinuturo sa school, but it's actually, ngayon ko lang nalaman nga na the, the width and breadth of occupational medicine. And it's really very interesting. At natutunan natin na importante pala ito, lalo na ngayon nagkaroon ng COVID, na na-highlight kayo, Dr. Jean, na-highlight ang importansya niyo talaga na itong COVID crisis, lalo na, na nagkakagulo na yung mga kumpanya on the world. Oo, oh, 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 yes. Talagang sumikat ang occupation. No, no, no. And it's, it's, it's a long time coming. Yeah, mataas ang statistics sa workplace kasi. Nahirap, sobra. nahirap ikaw. Sobra. Yeah, so for everyone, you know, hindi lang residency, occupational medicine is a great career. Um, you can use it throughout the rest of your career. Hindi, ano, mm -hmm. Hindi talaga, uh, you can combine it with a family, depende sa iyo on how busy you wanna be. Tama ba ako, Dr. Jean? Yes, you can. Tsaka ano yan eh, uh, yan. usually they, they, although ano lang yan, measured lang yan, ilang hours ka lang eh. Usually ganun naman yan. So you have quality time with your family. Yun yan. Uh, matatawag ka lang, pag nagkaroon na May accident. family time. Yun ang problema lang. Pag kunyari, nagkaroon ng aksidente sa planta, hanapin niyo yung doktor kasi magkakaroon kami ng investigation dyan. Yan. Okay. Okay. Thanks, okay. Dr. Jean.